My expectations, um, actually when I walked in, I was nervous as heck. <laughs> so what I was expect, I, I didn't have a lot of big expectations. I knew the concept. I knew that everything was getting created from scratch. There's a lot of energy. That's the first thing you feel. And a lot of people. Some that you know, a lot that you don't know. Because this is the first time I ever like tried something like this. And I was pretty sure I was pretty sure I was gonna meet a bunch of people who have, you know, done this at least, you know, three, four times. And just I I was holding on to the hope that what everybody was telling me that it was a lot of fun, you know so I was, I was really counting on that, but honestly, I was kind of nervous. There certainly was the anxiety of it. Um, at first, it seemed like, oh, we have all day. And here I am, just going cold turkey. And, and you're all in it together, and you can't get off, but you're all going somewhere. This is all about doing seven world premieres in 24 hours. We're mounting seven plays in 24 hours. I'm really excited. It's going to be great uh, putting on seven productions, seven world premieres in 24 hours and being a part of that. It's going to be excellent. stole this from another guy. Well, he'd been through several of these and wanted to do theater when he got back to town, but all of his friends had moved away. So he says, well, I know some writers and we could stay up and write. I wonder if directors and actors would just show up if we offered to let them do it. And I was one of them that did. Actually, I didn't mean to. My wife did and I came along and I got stuck directing. That's kind of the microcosm of the project. So for a quick way for all of us to get to know each other, we're going to do what's called a speed bonding. Okay. Seven different locations throughout the theater, one for each director, <clears throat> and each actor will cycle through each director's group at least once, uh, and they will be in different combinations, and they will have things they need to do that uh, the director will be able to look at and get some idea of who they're dealing with and what kind of talent and range and whatnot they have. Um, beginning of the group. Your name, what you do for a living, your dream role, whether it's TV, movie, stage, puppet show, whatever, I don't care. Whole project takes three minutes. Maestro, launch us with... Ah! No! bonding was crazy. We never had a chance. Not once did we finish everything that we were supposed to do. <laughs> Running, around, running, running into each other as we, the siren that they had sounded like a World War II, the bombs are dropping on England, you gotta be careful or you're gonna get hit with something. So that siren, every time it went out, went off, it scared the britches off of you, but also it, you know, you, you did, you ran like crazy people to get to the next spot. So now I need writers. I'm always nervous when, right when they pull out the, the, um, the little 
piece of paper and tell you what it is that you have to do because as soon as they do I draw a blank and I have nothing to think about for two hours but that piece of paper so um, I'm, I'm, I always get nervous when I get up there right before I get that slip <laughs> yes look at it and stew on it and the Oscar goes to oh good god I can't even read it <laughs> this handwriting what do you think it says just it's safe Must be present to win. Don't worry. We can't figure out the handwriting. Okay. Yeah. Can I make you read it? Which one do you want to do? Or do you want to do both? Yeah, do both. Uh, well, we'll do both. We can't figure out if it says... No. We, we, you think it's beans? I think it's bears. <laughs> and he thinks it's because. So the topic will be beans, bears, because. <laughs> there, that, you can't read the handwriting. Yeah, the, and initially it was supposed to be just one theme, but they couldn't, they weren't sure what the uh, strip said, so I had like three, one, one guy thought it was beans, I thought it was, I think, bears, and someone else thought it was because. So, that was my theme, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I am deathly allergic. Oh. <laughs> All that glitters ain't gold. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, not a problem. All that glitters ain't gold. Yay! Yay! Are you kidding me? Yes, because you're going to be doing these plays. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me such faces like, oh. <laughs> so the, some, these are the words, phrases that will somehow or other show up somewhere, either as the title of the play or as the um, word line in the play, or they've got to work it in somehow or other. All right. So. Tomorrow, bright and early, you'll see me with bags under my eyes by then. Well, as you just saw, we've just introduced everybody to everybody. Uh, the whole purpose of the speed bombing is to give the directors just a few seconds image of what these people are doing. Because remember, from this point on, I'll be minding the writers as they stay up all night, uh, writing plays based on referring to, possibly incorporating the words that they just pulled on those strips of paper. So they'll be up all night. Their scripts are due at 5.30, damn it. You're not ready for it. These projects are always insane. Matter of fact, what will probably happen is you guys will say, oh no, I absolutely have to have these. I have to have these, but I gotta have one more guy. And Mark Bryan will walk through the door and say, what were your counts? Oh no, you were wrong, there's another guy. It just happens. Just do what you need to do. It'll, it'll magically work out. I don't know how. I've ha I have a bit of writing experience. Not like a. I'm, I'm not no, say an expert at it. For the first one day only that I wrote for, um, I sat with the computer in front of me for about four hours, with nothing. Because one of my biggest fears was writer's block. Uh, writer's block was. Not good, especially for like a five hour ride, writing session. So the second play I wrote, I again had writer's block and gosh, at least half the night I had nothing. <laughs> I was still nervous because I don't want, I really don't want that to be something that continues to happen. Oh my gosh, the only word I have down is the, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Where's the beef? So the idea that came to me, and I'm toying around with is a Texan, a meat eater, in a very California, vegan, politically correct society, um, maybe like a dinner party, where everything is like the raw diet or something like that. So <laughs> I'm toying around with that. I'm is the world without tears? Do you have any ideas yet? Um, I'm not really for sure. Uh, maybe to win a lottery and spread and enjoy around the world with it. To be rolled out tears. So uh, this time I had my dictionary, I had my thesaurus, I was ready to go, and what I do is I look at each of the words, you know, and just read up on the thesaurus to see if anything just clicks, you know? So that's what, what I was working on. What's going to click with? I'm allergic to everything. So go to the sketch format and just go ahead and be uh, silly for this one. And uh, as I was thinking, I was thinking, okay, bears, rabbits, what else? And I was thinking, and then all of a sudden it just popped, how about werewolves? I'm thinking about writing something about a werewolf slaying 101 type of thing, or about a 
a guy who, so stupid, it's a, uh, hey, uh, uh, it's like a class of werewolf slaying. It was strange, uh, the idea, as soon as I pulled the, the idea out of the hat, which was uh, loosely based on uh, the lyrics from uh, Turn, uh, uh, for everything, turn, 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 or whatever, and it was burn, burn, burn. And um, so uh, I don't know why, maybe I ate spicy food the night before or something, but I was feeling very surreal and absurdist and suddenly started thinking of Alice in Wonderland. Thinking of um, really crazy like California names like Willow or Sycamore or something like that. <laughs> That's my first step, I guess, in getting some plot pieces to put together, so. I was basically thinking uh, at different times in my life, uh, you'll find if, if you desire something, you want friends in your life or you want um, anything, a car or whatever, those things are given to you, but maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for. You're told that if you, if you do that and they figure out that you had any structure coming into it, then you're out. Uh, we have had people in the past that have actually come in with a script already written, which is a no-no. Uh, as soon as I walked in, I didn't know what, what I was doing. The only time I got my, uh, the only time the idea started popping out was when they gave us our theme. It's got to stay fresh. It's got to be something that's off the cuff. Because uh, I think that makes the spirit of the adventure, you know, it's, it's much more fun. It's, it's much more exciting and a little bit more dangerous. I probably did about about three drafts. It's, it was my last one that I that I actually submitted. I left about three, maybe three or four. I was done before two. I think I was. I think I was the second to last person to leave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, long time. We've never had it finished that early. Usually it's the last three seconds. It was nice. It was nice. I, I'm, I, 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 I get it from my dad. I, uh, he used to s stay up all night. He was a painter and he would stay up really, really late all night. So it probably wasn't as hard for me as it might've been for some of the others, but Usually if you've got a pack of cigarettes, you're okay. It was a long night. It was uh, frustrating at times, but it's different. I mean, I'm used to staying up late. I was really, really impressed with some of, the, some of the insights they had. Not to avoid the topics, but to neither depend on them or be held back by them. So that was, I'm, I'm very interested to see what the directors do with these. It ought to be very pretty. It's so, I just wrote it. So it's just really hard to say because I'm so close to it, you know? So, yeah, we'll, we'll hope for the best. Um, but everybody go ahead and grab one. Okay, I'm And I was. I already seen people would, didn't follow directions. You would start to say. I would. Six thirty. The directors show up, bleary, tired, sucking down coffee as fast as they can. They read through the scripts as fast as they can get through them because as soon as they formed a favorite, they're then going to put lists of favorites down and compete to to direct their favorite. Six in the morning, you get here and you you see all these writers just finishing up at their computers, and you think, oh my goodness, these poor people. They're tired, you're tired, you come in, but it's exciting because you want to see what's happened. And the scripts are all laid out and there's copies, so we all can pick up like copies and read them. We have about five, ten minutes to read each script for the very first time, and probably one time only get to read the script. Well, actually, they don't tell you anything about the director pro process when you're an actor, so f I had no idea, even though I was in the, the previous two One Day Onlys. Um, I knew I wouldn't have much time to read the scripts, and I'm dyslexic, and so I was very worried about being able to read the scripts and decide on a script. And, and so that was, the, I knew it was going to be stressful. <laughs> and as soon as that's done, or even before you get to finish reading them through, it's time to choose the, act, choose, uh, the scripts. And first of all, they hold up a script, and whoever wants it, you know, bids for it. If you're the only one, you're lucky and you get that script. All right, so has everybody thought about which is their favorite? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go through and show me your hand if it's your favorite first, okay? Pick up lines. All right. Oh. <laughs> but if 
there's more than one person who want it, then it's the rock, paper, scissors thing, <laughs> which I didn't do so good at the first two times. So, um, Alex in Wonderland, three people, three people come up here. I think it's just the two of us. I think it's no, two of us. No, one she wants werewolves. You want werewolves? The only two people want Alex? Okay. <laughs> Rock, scissors, paper. We're going to do the, the, a three out of, the best out of three. Ready? Put your hand behind you. The, the, go, go back, go in front. Put, ready? And one, two, three. Oh, you got okay, okay, one time. Okay, three out of three. Okay, ready? And put one, two, three. Oh man, he's got it. <laughs> okay, so you won it, Alex. I'm oh, yes. <laughs> yes. oh, sorry, I'll hold on to my copy. Good job. Time. Okay. Don't worry, man. <laughs> okay. I've seen it go to arm wrestling, coin tosses, lots of other very complicated, silly games. Sometimes it gets a little testy, but you know, we have uh, we have anger management techniques. Um, it never gets bad. So <laughs> we're playing rock, paper, scissors to see, because like three of us wanted the Werewolf 101. And we're playing rock, paper, scissors. So it's me and two guys playing rock, paper, scissors. Now, three people playing rock, paper, scissors. You know, if one person beats both those guys, that should count as two wins, right? It should. Um, but it didn't. <laughs> and so I lost it. <laughs> one, two, three. You get it, you get it. Just like, it was so fast choosing the scripts. And so I got a script I didn't read. So, <laughs> and you don't get a chance to read it before you have to pick the actors. So I just had to look at the, the description of uh, what the characters were to pick the actors. Okay, how many characters are you playing? Oh my gosh, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, four, you get to pick the first two. Oh, okay. I skimmed the script. So, um, when I had the script, since it was the last one off the table, it was already time to pick actors. And I didn't even have a chance to think of what kind of characters there were and what I was going to need. And there was no chance to think, oh, I need, you know, a certain type or anything, which I think that's kind of good because then I picked two actors that I've worked with before in classes and two that I had never met before. And I hadn't read the end of the script, and the end of the script described one of the actresses as being really homely. So I like apologized to Jan afterwards, like, I didn't read the end. Because <laughs> uh, my first one day only, the description of the actresses are, find the fattest, ugliest actresses to play this part. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like oh, OK, I could do that. <laughs> But, um, and I didn't know my other two actors. I think, well, I'd seen Matthew in um, the um, epic proportions that Rover did. So I, I knew he could act. So that was good. And then the other girl I hadn't seen, she was her first one day only. First mention you for your cast. The next first mention you need for your cast. Just kind of reach in there all together. <laughs> It would take too long. How many? Just one? Just one more. Mm -hmm. How many more? Uh, I need uh, two. Nine. Three. Twelve. Fifteen. This is the, that's the okay. point. Everybody, on a count of three, snatch your people. Everybody get, uh, get on the side. I didn't say three yet. Oh. One, two, three. Uh, werewolf slang is whoever got that script. I think there's a person that just shows up briefly. No? Or he was going to write it that way. I don't know. He changed his mind. Okay. Let me know if you're one person short. But uh, as of 8 o'clock, they've got to have made up their mind because that's when the actors show up. And by that time, they will have had to not only fight over the scripts, but fight over all the snapshots you saw them take out there. We don't allow headshots. No headshots allowed. We don't care how much experience these actors have coming in. That's not what this is about. Are you happy with your script? I am. I got my first choice. I'm in a which script was that? Uh, it's called Pick Up Lines by Janet Benning. And uh, I got a good cast. Uh, most everyone was on the list of people that I put together that I thought these would be these would be strong strong ensemble. I needed to put them together, so I feel like I got lucky. I hope it, you know, turns out the way I'm, I'm thinking it should. So I got one called Where's the Beef? It has to deal with um, the differences in uh, vegans versus uh, people who, you know, basically the militant vegans. 
versus the non. And yes, I'm um, hard at work. Uh, this is Alex in Wonderland. It's a you know takeoff of Alice in Wonderland with a boy named Alex, um, and it's really interesting. It's going to be fun to stage, so I'm really excited about it. It was, okay. my, it was my first choice, so I'm really excited. I don't understand it. And there's words I don't know, and I don't like to be the stupid person if I'm directing. <laughs> I like to know what I'm doing. Um, it has some interesting props that I don't know where we're going to get. And it's short. What's it about? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because I don't want the... Uh, writer to be insulted. <laughs> it's actually well written, it's just I don't get it. <laughs> I am happy. It's not what I had first intended, but hey, I think we could have fun with it. It is about aliens coming to study Earth. The synopsis was A World Without Tears. The title is Aliens in Love. I think it's going to be great fun. I don't intend to read the end of the script until they do the show. I don't want to know how it is. <laughs> All right. Which one did you get? <laughs> he doesn't know. I don't know. I'm not going to read it until we do. Yeah, I think so. Um, it was uh, one of the ones that made me laugh when I first read it. <laughs> and, you know, there's two kinds of casting, typecasting and miscasting. So, <laughs> yeah, first choice, everyone. In case you saw this, you were my first choice. <laughs> By 8 o'clock, the actors show up, start getting their bagels, and we shuffle them into their first rehearsal rooms. And they will rehearse constantly until lunch. I figured I'd bring them, and then they said dress up, and I was like, no. the Directors all had their scripts with you, correct? And the cast for Miss Carol Rise is going to be... I need Andrew Hunter, Brad Eubanks, Kathy Jordan, Sasha Magano, Dan Holmes, Rich Machado, Lucy Bando, and Nick Faust, and Matthew Fisher, Alan Josephson, and Nathan Pennington, Karen McCoy, Mike Hathaway, Charles Bates, and Ooh. Colleen Carey. I got cast in uh, Werewolf Hunting 101, and when I heard that, that was when the apprehension kicked in. I'm like, you have got to be kidding, werewolves. And then I finally read the script, and it was like, oh my god, this is just hysterical. And well, what I got, it was very interesting. I was, I was so amazed at the script um, that we got because it, it seemed so polished. It was almost inconceivable to me that someone could have, have put pen to paper, so to speak, within however long they had, a few hours, and, and come up with a play like that. We had a very, very gifted playwright. I played the role of Dot in Aliens in Love. And I swear that was, could, there could not have been a better role for me because she was, she, um, not that I'm so lovely, but her role epitomized, it was the epitome of love. She was sort of the symbol of love, almost an angel of love, so to speak, like brought down here to bring love upon the world. And so I just dove right in and I just explored that and nothing else and she was very an over-the-top caricature in my head and the, and the director uh, Debbie Chang I, I feel like she was happy with that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the name of my play was Pick Up Lines and it did have the the funniest idea from the night before. The line that I had was why don't you come on over to my space so I can Twitter all over your Facebook which was hilarious and I didn't get to be in the other play that I thought and you know had my fingers crossed that I might be in but um I did get a chance to be in the idea that I thought was the best from the night before. I did meet one of the other cast members at that time. So when I found out that he was acting with me, that was really great because I had liked him so much and liked his work that I had seen previously. I'd never had the chance to act with him, but I did with this performance, so that was really fun. Well, uh, I basically played the part of a guy, an ordinary guy, who uh, has had bad experience dating. And here we are in the dating scene and it's a buddy of me uh, a, a buddy of mine and, and me and we're at a bar and there's three beautiful women across the the uh, floor and it's a matter of us kind of talking it up and and building up enough confidence for me to walk over and, and introduce myself the role I was given was 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 a very big role in our, our play had just some real main characters so it was a pretty meaty role Each room, we've got 45 minutes 
by the end of the second 45 minutes, we need to have it blocked. It moves really, really fast. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five 45-minute sessions before lunch. I've never done a project like one day only. I've heard about it. I heard it's really exciting and fun and exhausting. So I, and I'm a very energetic kind of hyper person. And I really loved the idea of doing an entire project all in one day and just being done with it and working really, really hard. I love those kind of 12 hour work days um, where you're doing a lot of artistic things. And that's exactly what it was. It was fast paced. There was no slowing down. You're eating and, and learning your lines. And I realized that you had to be there for the full day. See, I, I was planning on coming home, having a shower, getting ready to go back. No, you had to be ready to go. It's nonstop. We went from one station where we were given the script, uh, met our directors, met, met our other co-actors. Rehearse, 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 rehearse. Me being a first time director but having acted before, I remember the thing that made me most uncomfortable as an actor was not feeling like I knew my lines because we only had one day to memorize everything and get the props and get the staging and get everything. So I think I wanted to make sure that we had lots of time to get comfortable with the script and feel like we had it memorized. They're getting to read their scripts for the first time. The very first time my actors read the script, I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> because I'm dyslexic and reading something doesn't always click with me. But if reading it out loud and, and seeing it you know, acted out, um, it, it helps a lot. So the very first time they read through it, I got it. And so I was like, OK, I can do this. And they read it. And they, they had inflection and character, and they were just really good with it. And they all enjoyed it, because they were like, this is what we got, so let's make fun with it. And how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> if hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. With that, you, you want me to see that? That sort of thing. What's your area of expertise? Uh, corporate finance. Oh. And join us. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, please, you call me Victor. 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 Wonderland, Alex. Welcome, honored guest. You call this Wonderland? I would have to. I would, I would have expected rainbow, bright colors, strange lights, and sounds. This is kind of bleak. Don't you think? Your imagination. Blame the architect, not the residents. Harry, <laughs> yeah, you know, long hair, long beard. Looks like Grizzly Adams just came out of the mountains. Well, he kept winking at me from his chair. Poisoning? Yeah, food poisoning. He was chasing me around at first, and all of a sudden, he just started hurling up chunks of Pedro. And... I'm Pedro. I get eaten uh, by the werewolf. Very, you clipped. Yeah, very clipped. Um, Pedro, what makes this funny is that he says, uh, Pedro, remember here? All of a sudden, he's like, sure, how was things at school? Yes, son! <laughs> and you're bumping off on this thing, and they're going, no, no. And so a lot of things, maybe you, we can even try play with the idea of the sooner you can get through your food and get the hell out of there, the better. <laughs> so you should be, like, shuffling all the time. Okay. Just work that sucker as much as you can, and, and you're just, yes. <laughs> The art of improv is always making sure that you agree and, and continue yeah. to roll. Don't, don't stop it dead. Just continue to roll and, and, and say yes. I think that's, yeah, yeah. it'll work out. That's well, good. Headed in a good direction, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was creative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of bigger. You know, just watching you this morning, you know, as we were all gathered around, you know, everybody followed you. You know, you, you were stretching, and so everybody like starts to stretch. <laughs> and so she's already, she's already in this group of us. You know, she is the married one in the group. She is kind of like the motherly, you know, at the class reunion. Cause I, I just left my 15 year, and there was the mother who, you know, went around and made sure everybody was okay. And so she's kind of taken on that with us. But I don't know what it is. The old, the firewall. And this is gonna be like almost like a witch dance, you know? You're like, oh, the virus is an explosion. We will destroy you. Burn, burn, burn. And here are my friends. So anyway, um, and then bring him center. Um. And, but he's going to be on this side. Because I do want, when, 
you can do cross and you're going to cross tune on the uh, versus the ball okay now you know just cross tune and just be kind of that look over and cross the rest of you. And yeah. Yeah. now are we really I mean are we going to try we don't know yet we could either have real cuts and saucers and things like that or we could lie everything you know oh, that, I mean, that's so true. the counter doesn't I mean, the counter doesn't have to. We have When I was four, however, the commune in which we lived allowed me to rename myself, and I went by the name Snowflake until I was 22. Upon visiting the ravaged areas of Southeast Asia with the Peace Corps, however, I reverted to the name Cambodia. It is now time to go to your next location. Es la hora de cambiar de ubicación. Es la hora de cambiar de ubicación. Gracias por cooperar. Thank you for cooperating. Have a nice day. Tengan un buen día. I'm a friendly, nice person, but I also realize the show has to open up at 8 o'clock. And like in an instance in one of the plays, I needed all the plays to be blocked by the second period because I wanted to see what they look like, get a sense of how strong the plays were or if there was weaknesses so I could assemble the show so I could start working on the program uh, to figure out the flow of the show. And I had one director who had not done his blocking. He was nowhere near it. I mean, he was only halfway through it. He already gone through two hours. I'm like, buddy, the show opens at eight. We got to get it done. I went back on the third period. He still wasn't done. But at that third period, I said, if this is not done by the end of this period, I'm a director. I'm going to come in and just do it for you and take over. You do not want me to do that because I've got a show that is at eight o'clock and you need to get on it. And he was just totally shocked that I was that force, you know, that I was, I actually didn't say it quite as nicely as I said it now. And then we started getting nervous that, well, we haven't really been on the stage much. We've only been from room to room and, you know, sort of rehearsing in closets and, you know, just experience, you know, you normally get to rehearse on the stage a few times just to fill the space. Um, so I was a little bit wanting more time on stage, but that's just the nature of the project because there's so many groups. So if you're upstage, you swing at me. A dog! A dog! Quick, hide! Oh, that's the third time today. It was sitting on the desk. Just sitting on the desk. No, I'm just... Oh. I'm just like everyone else. Um, there was one director who decided to add, incorporate quite a few extra elements that weren't in the script. And I looked at her little run through and I said, absolutely not, because you've now compromised the vision of the writer. You have to trim this here. You have to trim this here. Um, and I know she wasn't particularly thrilled with me, but she did it. And I said, because if you're not, I will tell you, this is how it's going to have to be. You know, it's got a great little show, but there's too much filler that you've added in that is not part of the script. But then again, it's also the directors, because I did direct once too, and it's also the directors to take over and, and run too and see their, what they're going to do with it. Okay, so the plot of my play <laughs> was that there was this vampire who was allergic to blood and this sucky bus, that's wrong, it's Incubus, see, I called him a succubus all day. It's an incubus who is allergic to sexual contact. And this um, poor uh, girl who is allergic to everything. Because I think the, the catchphrase was something about being allergic. So these three characters interact with each other. And we decided that the, the two characters were figments of the allergic girl's imagination. Because she's secluded in the the house her father keeps her doesn't let her go out she's not allowed to do anything so the the succubus and the vampire are um part of her imagination nope they were they were they were real creatures you know that could you know were able to come in and out of the bubble i don't know how they just did you know so <laughs> it's one of the exactly i only had 10 minutes to put it together um so that was that was how i had it set up <laughs> Room. So she makes up these characters so they're part of their minds. And I tried to do that with a little bit of lighting, but you know, we, had, we were early in the tech process, so they didn't have the lights quite ready up yet, and um, yeah, I didn't get much sleep. And <laughs> I mean, the one thing I, I really wish that we could have is actually communicating with the director, because once we get it done, then the, the director has no clue about what's happening. 
like some of the um, notations I had made about the dark woman. Well, if in Shakespeare, the dark woman was the one he's always writing about. So that was the reference to Carrie was Shakespeare's dark woman at one point in time. But that, you know, but since I wasn't able to talk to the director to get that across to her, it sort of disappeared. <laughs> and I really wanted to ask her questions about the Ophelia and Desdemona because I think she got the two characters confused in Shakespeare because Ophelia is with Othello and, or Desdemona is with Othello and Ophelia was, is with Hamlet. And, and so it was confusing to us. And I really wanted to switch it to be right, but. It's an adventure. It's gonna be very interesting. <laughs> lunch they break they make a list they've collected a list of all the props all the costume things they need hopefully they're available from the cast having brought a half dozen five to a half dozen props pieces junk and the weirdest things get called for and the weirdest things show up he wasn't kidding about a sink we had the call for a kitchen sink and a guy without skipping a beat says i've got a blue one will that do in the back of his car who knew he had for a set, the following items. A bench, four, five, five cubes. How many cafe tables? Two, still two to cafe tables. Oh, they're not here yet, but, uh, Three, five, how many costume changes each one of you? Five. Five. Oh, and you had to take props with you, so I was running around my house like a crazy person. I had a saddle, like an actual riding saddle, I had a, watering can, I had a bike pump, just crazy props from my house that I didn't know how they might be used. Um, oh, exciting, crazy, right now I'm gathering props. Um, specific things like dresses with dots and, and Mars bars. A little too much time trying to find the Mars bar. I think you might remember the script called for a Mars bar for the alien, because she gets really crazy about the Mars bar and they don't sell them. We were asked to bring a whole bunch of props and costumes um, just in case anyone need them, needed them, and someone had a dress that pretty much sort of fit me and had little tiny polka dots, and that's what I wore. <laughs> we had one time we needed three angel wings. There were three angel wings in the room. I don't know how that happened, but three different people brought three different angel wings, and we had them. Well, like a mane. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I can, like, that's put a season out. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be good. Awesome. Awesome. Chewbacca costume. <laughs> My directing style yeah. is to hire talented actors, which I did, so it's good. <laughs> um, kind of let them get into it, feel a thing, and then just direct them so the audience can see what they intend. So. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bossy and a little controlling, <laughs> but I've found that in this particular situation, it's been a benefit because we have such a short time period. So I basically take everything that I normally do when I direct, and I've had to condense it down, you know, to this day, and, um, but I've been able to go through the entire process. Sometimes something I would take a week to do, we've been able to do in a matter of minutes, and because the cast have been following my lead and just, you know, really paying attention and trying to, to uh, go with the direction I'm giving them, they may or may not agree, we're able to accomplish things really quickly. And so, um, so that's helped. And, uh, but I also try and, you know, let them interject if they've got ideas and things. And we've been able to incorporate some of those. And um, so everybody feels some ownership in it. And I think that's important. So. I'm very much an actor's actor, so, uh, which makes it a little hard for this because they want you to sort of say, okay, show me your blocking. So we did do some rough blocking just to stage some things, but I'm a lot more about letting the actors make choices. I believe there's only, there's no such thing as a right way to do it. There's just a bunch of wrong ones. So let's keep doing the wrong ones and we'll get rid of all the wrong pushes and we'll find the right one. And a lot of times the actors will make better choices than I could ever come up with. Um, so once they understand that and they, and they understand we can work that way, I'm real sensitive to what the actor's doing as an actor too. So I see them do that and I can go, Okay, that, that works. Let's keep that and get rid of the other stuff. So I'm kind of organic about it. I like to let the actors just play and we see what works and what doesn't work. I have a basic concept of where I want it to go and an idea on the, the characters themselves. 
Uh, but I like to, I don't like to dictate to the actors. I don't like to, 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 to spoon feed them a lot of things. I prefer, I think it's more fun for them to make their own discoveries, but we're working on a real strange time constraint right now. So sometimes if the discoveries don't happen exactly the way I want them to, then maybe I'll push them in that direction. Right. So I'm a benevolent dictator. This is, I think that's probably my style right there. <laughs> I'm very hands-on. I'm, I'm very open to their ideas. I want to work with the actors and not I don't want to be their boss. I don't want to tell them exactly what to do. Um, I'm open to them doing whatever they want to do. If it doesn't work, I'll tell them it doesn't work, <laughs> and we'll we'll figure out a way for something to to compromise. I'm not gonna. I'm not there to tell them what to do. I'm, I'm there to guide them what to do and to find a certain character and to find the situation, to find um, the right thing that, that the audience will um, will connect to. My main thing is just running it. Um, you know, and, and as we go through, we find like little places where I go, oh, wait, 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 we gotta stop and do this. This will be funny here, or whatever. But, you know, we started off just, we read through it, we talked to, we, this one we actually had to talk about characters because they were very different from all of these people. Um, a lot of times I don't even have to do that on, on one day only, but, um, you know, we talked about where their characters were coming from and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I do like to actually block it you know, for them and tell them, okay, here you cross here, here you cross here. A lot of directors will just say, I'll, you know, move, and if I don't like it, I'll move you where I want you. And that, that doesn't work for me, even in this sort of situation. Right now, it's, because it's a different pace than most plays are, I think it is just to um, work quickly, have fun, let all ideas fly out, um, quickly pick up some, start implementing them. And because for the actors, it's, it's scary if you don't know your lines. For this type of thing, I think it's really important to give them a chance to do that, because then it's fun for them. We don't want them to be worried through the whole piece, am I going to drop a line? Because it's, uh, it's hard to memorize that many um, lines in such a short period. And all of a sudden, you're about halfway through, and you're, and you're thinking, I don't actually know my lines yet. It, it was an interesting challenge to try and learn that many lines, so. I, I just thought I was gonna, I'm gonna get out there and I'm going to tank. The one thing I had noticed that the problem with the one day onlys before that I had seen and the one I participated in was uh, actors were having a hard time remembering their lines. Three o'clock, I believe, we've got a nap. There's the, the official nap. There's a required 20 minute nap to help the lines sink in. Nap time. I was actually kind of looking forward to my nap time, but my scheduled nap time happened uh, at a point in the day where there was a lot of hubbub going around, and the lobby where we were trying to sleep was just chaos, you know, and trying to sleep through that. Now I know next year, bring earplugs, br bring something, bring headphones, bring something, because you're not going to get that quiet time. And, and, and I, but I don't know, since I didn't actually get any sleep, did it help? Could be. Do I do I just stay up all day next time and <laughs> not not break with you know established tradition now? Thirty minutes of getting away from everything and clearing your mind makes you refocus on it when you come back. A lot of actors will say, "I can't remember after I my took from my lines anymore." They may feel that way, but they at least have a sense of the continuity of the play, the continuity of the character, the purpose behind what needs to happen. And so when that mandatory nap time came, I took it. And I went out to my car and I slept and it was great. But I lost, I forgot all my lines. Although after lunch they all lost their brain and all the lines were gone. So in nap time they're all sleeping with their script under their head so that it will soak into their brain. <laughs> That's what I told them. So we'll see if it works, I don't know. But yeah. They say that that's supposed to help concrete those lines in your mind. Oh no, no, I lost all mine. I was doing great in the morning. I had that thing down, but in the afternoon and in the evening, I, I, I did get a little nervous. There was one script I didn't think was gonna come off as well when I had seen it in the rehearsal. This was the Werewolf 101. Because the last rehearsal I saw of it, the actors were still struggling with the lines, so the characters weren't there. Getting close to, I, I, probably around 5.30, 6 o'clock, and I still did not have my lines locked in. 
Well, my role involved playing sort of an eccentric character that had a British accent, which I didn't feel, you know, I felt like I, I could do. Um, looking, looking back, on, who knows how well I did it. You know, you, it's a little hard when you're trying to add all those elements within that short amount of time. Uh, I had a lot of doubts about being able to learn the lines. It was a lot of lines. And, and really, his lines were longer than that. The first draft, his lines were like longer. And then I stopped and thought, OK, you know what? It's, um, they're probably not going to have enough time to remember this, so cut some lines out. I swear, I've been, I have over 127 accomplished, like, com like lipophatic, lipophatic, hunts to my name. And he was beating himself up so much about not giving there, not giving there, not giving there. And I'm like, dude, I'm in the same boat. And, and so I'm sitting here giving him all the advice that I should have been taking myself of just don't think about it anymore. Stop worrying about it, because that's one thing, you know, Mark Bryan's always there behind the scenes. You know, it's like, would you stop worrying about this? You've got it. There's one play that's a little wordy. Um, I'm hoping the one actor will be able to get all of his lines done, but fortunately, he's playing a professor. And if push comes to shove, and I see it's not going well, he, he could be carrying a book. <laughs> and there's a sneaky way to put a script on stage so it's just there in case he needs it. Cause... Well, I'm not going to have cheats, but there may be a little bit of paraphrasing that goes on. Not exactly what the author wrote, but uh, we'll see how it comes out. But the actress seems to be pretty seasoned, so I'm thinking he's going to be able to get all his lines down. Yeah. I'm tanned, I'm rested, I'm ready. <laughs> shift back in right before showtime. <laughs> okay. Right after that, we go into tech rehearsal. And we have, I think it's 30 minute increments. Everybody's on the stage for 30 minutes to more or less run through any basic blocking, any basic lighting cues. There's not a lot you can do with it because it's, it's a standard stock plot and you've only got a few minutes. So we get through each of the pieces in order of the run. Come with me, everyone. I just don't know, I don't, I don't know what they're using yet. Supposed to be purple though, is my Okay. Ah, okay, that's a little bit better. I am coming up, I am coming right in. The placement order of the plays needed to be revisited. Uh, because some plays are obviously going to be stronger than others. You sometimes have a really good strict script, but the director may not have done a very good job with it. Instead of a randomized order of the evening, really find a flow between the plays that will feel more satisfying for the audience. And choosing what's going to open the show that's going to just grab the people's attention, what's going to close the show that feels like a closing play. Not necessarily always the best, but it felt like that wraps up, helps wrap up the evening. Uh, there's a trick to finding the flow in it. There was the gaps of setting up and tearing down each play. And I thought to myself, the audience needs to be entertained for the, because sometimes it would last 30 seconds, sometimes it would last five minutes. And I said, we need to do something during that gap time so that the audience isn't there. It, you lose the momentum because visually nothing's happening. So I didn't tell them I was going to do this at all. I mentioned I was going to institute a nap time, and they thought that was the idea, but I did not tell them about the costuming <laughs> or that I was going to go ahead and MC the show for them until the curtain went up. <laughs> because as an MC, I proceeded to explain what had happened in the last 24 hours. They understood that there was a zaniness behind the entire process. So I therefore introduced each play, which would then take, eat up some time for each set change. And then I took it one step further. I thought, what if I come out in costume relevant to whatever was pulled out of the hat? Oh, no. <laughs> it went over quite well. <laughs> Needless to say, the audience guffawed. And then they got, they got the, the connection of what was happening between me dressing up and, the, and the, what was going to be in the top, oh, the, what was pulled out of the slip of paper. So now they're looking forward to also the breaks between the plays. So therefore, now it becomes a whole unified evening of theater. Well, they, they did make me dance. I will take credit for that. That was mine. 
I just seen Evan Almighty with my kids and they do the little dance number at the end of that. So, so <laughs> that was, uh, that was rough because I, I'm not a dancer. Uh, you know, I can make a fool of myself, but they actually were like, no, this is going to be on the eight count and this and that. And they're, they're using terms and phrases. I, I go, uh, okay. Uh, all right. And man, they were, everybody got it except for me. So I'm out there, you know, <laughs> It gave me a whole new uh, appreciation for those people on the, you know, so you think you can dance. That uh, I have a whole new appreciation for those guys. We break for dinner, catch our breath. <sighs> if there's any tech polish up we need to do, we do that. House opens at 7:30, curtain at 8. Not much else. It's just a long screaming panic. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I gotta go change, I gotta go wash and make myself presentable with being MC and ah, it's gonna be great. He's gonna replenish, he's gonna replenish the bucket in there. And that corner. So the house will open. If it's not open yet, it will be very soon. We gotta go around the front of the building. Two entrances, the balcony is closed. Yes. They're ready, they're excited, and I'm just ready to turn everything over to them. So I'm just gonna Go give them one more hug. I'm gonna go to the potty and I'm gonna take my seat. I'm trying to relax. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I want to nap. Um, it was it was pretty brutal. Uh, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> That's all I want to say. A great cast, um, great support, and um, it made it all worthwhile because it was a lot of fun. And if it hadn't been fun, I would probably be even more tired. <laughs> Rusty, I'm just okay. Okay, you've got two words, abs, original. We had, we had a little frustration in the afternoon, but we pulled it together, and uh, I think the cast is a little frustrated, and, uh, and they, but they pulled it together, and they're more com way more comfortable now. I'm way more comfortable now, and so um, I think it's going to be a great show. I'm really excited about it. Well, we'll play the program. There you go. Enjoy. My last comments are, I'm very excited to be done. <laughs> <laughs> And that uh, I'm kind of glad that I'm not going on stage because I'm very tired. I'm a little nervous because it's almost 8 o'clock. I don't know what time is it now. It's almost 8 o'clock. So, yeah, I'm a little nervous, but I like my group and I like my play. I'm playing an angsty teenager, which I'm, that's fine. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really excited. We'll see how it goes. This is the god. We have some good people. They have worked very, very hard. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, at this point, all I can tell the cast is just have fun. Enjoy what you're doing. After all, that's why it's called play. I don't know. <laughs> My actors are still struggling with lines, but it always comes together, so you never know how that's going to work. Oh, I am just so thankful to the actors that flow with everything. They have been so fantastic. Thank you, actors. Um, the tech people, all the people helping when I make like crazy last minute requests, which probably everybody has been doing all day long. We have been such good sports and trying to accommodate. And so helpful. Um, Basketball. Yeah. Somebody else is wearing the same hat. No, he's not wearing it. He's just, this is his okay. hat. Well, good. Then why don't you go ahead and, and you can use it, put it on backwards, get rid of it, put it on. Uh, you can always, uh, you can always leave it on the bench because there's always going to be plenty of room. Um, you can take your brother with it. I think that would be the ideal use for it. I think they're ready. I think they don't know they're ready, but um, you know, usually you get a couple of a couple of rehearsals, you know, before you know it. So um, they're certainly as ready as they'll ever be, and they did a great job. So, and uh, I have fabulous actors who interpreted it. it, 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 it. That that's not a word. Um, it's several. See, we get loopy after 24 hours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna make sense to the audience, and hopefully they're gonna laugh and. So I'm very happy. I know I was very sad this morning, but now I'm very happy. <laughs> and I'm really proud of him. And I'm proud of all my actors. They're so they're all really wonderful, and I'm really I'm really excited that they believed in me and I believed in them. And so uh, I, I I learned how to do a show in one day. 
That's basically what I did. And I, and I learned, I taught myself that I could do that. Good show, everybody. That's all I gotta say. Here's hoping to the best. Break legs, limbs, risk life. Okay, and go. It's show time. Keep your hands and legs inside the car at all times. So they need to live there for a year until your brother. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight? Welcome, my people. And welcome to One Day Only. I'm Mark Brian Sona, your host. I have traveled through time to come give you a fun evening of entertainment. And I want you to give a big round of applause to the most adventurous group of 54 artists that gathered in the last 24 hours to create seven world premieres. So give it up to all of them. For those of you who don't know what One Day Only is, yes, the title of the first play of the evening is Pick Up Lines by Janet Benning, and it was directed by, by Teresa and I mispronounced her name all day long, and I'm gonna do it again tonight. <laughs> A I believe it's Adria. But this Harry did. Whoa, whoa. Harry? Harry. Long hair, long beard. He was like Grizzly Adams coming out of the wilderness. <laughs> and then, what was even worse is he couldn't stop winking at me from across the room. I tried to ignore him, but when I got up to pay for my coffee, he was right there, right in front of my face. And I just tried my best to ignore him, but his slime was hot. Yeah, which one? Well, not to mention it, all of them. <laughs> that one on the left? Mm. Now, boy, <laughs> don't get your hopes up too bad. Actually, while we on that subject, don't get nothing up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, anytime you want. <laughs> yeah, anytime you want. Let's go. <laughs> performance of the evening, which was very nerve-wracking. Um, I, I wish that I would have been able to see a couple of the performances. I think that would have helped to steady my nerves. But coming out of it and being done and just the feeling of accomplishment and this was fun and this is, I don't do this on a regular basis. This was joyous. Um. <laughs> the low point, the ending. Yeah, it was when it was over. That was, you know, it was like, man, it was a blast. It was an absolute blast. Yeah. Our next play has to deal with allergies. And so I'm sorry, but I'm allergic to the audience. <laughs> the play is <laughs> written by Libby Mitchell, directed by Robin Coulange, and it's God bless you and the may the devil take care of you. <laughs> if hairs be wires, then black wires come out of her head. Shakespeare was a pompous Jenny when he was alive. And listening to all your love sick fighting and quoting the dark woman, I, I just can't. Mm. <laughs> you know Othello, right? <laughs> that pretentious ass actually strangled me on the stage just because I had... Oh, I, I feel it. I feel it. Come with me and be my love! Scan <laughs> <laughs> it, Valentino. You don't even know what she looks like. She's beautiful to me! You 
drew us to you. I don't know how that happened. Sometimes the heart just wants something, and it calls out. And then you get what you get. <laughs> so, I wanted a friend so bad. I got you? Woo! That's right, honey. You got the best damn friend on the market. <laughs> and you invited me in for tea. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a <coughs> vision of hope. Look well, therefore, on this day. Such is the salutation of dawn. I had already gotten a call <laughs> that they had to that they had cut some stuff out. So I already knew that going in and I knew from when they had cut something out of another person's uh, that sometimes there's things that don't come across then. So I already knew that I was probably going to not be as happy as I would have been normally. So I was like, okay, well we'll just go and enjoy it. <laughs> And that's what I did. Oh, little did I know the title of the play was going to be Alex in Wonderland or Over the Edge and Through the Looking Glass? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> but this is one of my favorite local playwrights named Matthew J. Edwards who joined us to do this show. And it was directed by Donnie Avery. So without much further ado, ado enjoy a play that has nothing to do with my costume. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi there. Hi there. Who are you and where am I? And who are you? Where am I? That's what I said. That's what I said. Oh. That's getting annoying. That's getting annoying. Stop that. Now stop that. You're late. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. You can't just leave. Wait, wait, I'm just, uh. That's what the fire ball. I haven't thought about this. That's what it is. <laughs> Behold, the firewall. Every season burn, burn, burn to everything. Burn, burn, burn. burn. All the viruses and Trojans. We will destroy. Corrupt. <laughs> Don't you talk about corruption here. Wait, you were about this, to is this is a family. This is a family show. This is a family show. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. You're late. I know already. I'm late. I'm so very, very late. Late for what? I said you're late, Alex. I heard you. Late no. for what? Alex, we need the script. Have you written anything yet? <laughs> Holy crap, Alex, the directors are gonna be here in 15 minutes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love talking to the cast uh, afterwards and, and giving them props for, for making my stuff look good. Because, you know, all I do is write it. They're the visual, you know? They're the actual paint on the canvas. <laughs> so the play was written by Christopher Soden and it was directed by Chris Messersmith. And the title, well of course the takeoff on the catchphrase, was All That Glitters Ain't Goldy. But as for me, I'm going to dance. Ruby, have I been harassing you, sweetheart? You need to ask? Ouch. <laughs> Young man, you are dangerously close to being asked to be moved from this table. Oh no, who would want to miss another moment of this love fest? <laughs> oh no! Victor! I was in Tadjo's night. Can we not get through one of these meals without your ecclesiastical debates? When the fate of my daughter's eternal soul is in peril, no. Oh, come on, Daddy! C, 
Sit down, young man. Victor, Victor, she's our company. Save your servants for someone else. Yeah, Dad. She's not even getting paid today. Give her a break. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Is it a crime that a man can just show a woman how lovely she looks when she dresses appropriately? Really? What is feminine? You know, I mean, uh... <laughs> The old fat guys. We'll be back in 15 minutes with Act Two. Woo! Thanks. Good job, everybody. We did it. I love entering in smoke. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourselves tonight? Who needs drugs? Just stay up nonstop. <laughs> this play was written by Crystal Pierce and it is directed by Debbie Cheng. Enjoy Aliens in Love. <laughs> different here. Uh, ma'am, is there something I can help you with? No, uh, you, you've had him two years? Yes, we're in love. We met two years ago today. <laughs> Would you like a bite? It's a Milky Way bar. What? Don't you know feeding chocolate to dogs can kill them? <laughs> What are tingles you? all over my body. Oh! <laughs> no, it's me. You're in love. Oh, it's the best feeling ever. Especially if he loves you back. Love? Yeah. Oh. Am I in love? being Werewolf Flame 101, again, you know, what does this have to do with it? And then it was written by Aaron McDavis, and it's directed by John Sizzik. And it has a fun, fun, wild cast. You're in for a treat of a play. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to Werewolf Slaying 101. My name is Professor Gray. Now, most of you are here because you've decided to conduct a career in the ancient and deadly art of werewolf slaying. Now, I'm glad you're here. However, you have to know that this career is not without its dangers. Many have ended up violently ill or even dead. And so for this reason, I know that if you need to withdraw at this time, it's completely all right with me. So, do any of you need to leave the class? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello to you two. <laughs> Anyone at all? <laughs> Anyone? 
<laughs> no one? Oh, what a brave lot we've got here tonight. <laughs> All right, before the first lesson, why don't we introduce ourselves? I'll have you know that the gentleman you see before you has conducted more than 127 successful lycanthropic ventures over the past 30 years. I have hunted, trapped, and destroyed werewolves, vampires, witches, wizards, and bears. <laughs> bears? Yes, bears. Why bears? <laughs> Why bears? <laughs> because, man, because. <laughs> I think I've seriously miscalculated this beast. I need a change in strategy. That's what it is. What I'd like you to do is bait him. Have him come chase you. And then, when he's tired out, you go in for the kill. Comprende? See? Si. All right, Pedro. Remember the Alamo! <laughs> What for? Oh, feel oh, oh, no, this does not sound good. Oh, my God, Pedro! Pedro, are you still alive? He contracted a case of food poisoning. Food poisoning? <laughs> yeah, food poisoning. He was chasing me around the cave, and then all of a sudden he just starts hurling up chunks of Pedro and spewing it all over the cave. <laughs> oh, I see. Perhaps the fella doesn't have a taste for Mexican food. I wish I could quit you. My play was what, second to last to go up, and um, I had just seen these, you know, really, really, you know, in my opinion, really good, you know, really, really well written, you know, plays, and and here they are, with, you know, they go from one thing to <laughs> werewolves. I'm like, oh gosh. This is where everything just is, is going to stop, and everyone's just going <laughs> to turn to me and go, like, "What do you?" <laughs> and I, his response to me was, "Wow, that was <laughs> that was better than I thought it was going to be." So that's that's always uh, fulfilling, because he he was very very creative. As soon as I, I forget the actor's name who played up uh, Professor Gray, as soon as he just you know starts saying it, and and I get the first laugh with the um, if I can remember when, when the first laugh when uh, he says. Okay, this is going to be a very dangerous uh, mission. So if anyone wants to leave, then you know, you know, they can go ahead. And then you see, you see him just doing that, and people are laughing at him, doing that. And I'm like, this might work. It, he was just as complimentary to me as I was. He's, he's like, y'all did. You, you took a places I wasn't even expecting. And he said, thank you for for fleshing out that character. He's like, you know, I'll put it out there, but you know, you just made it. I'm like, well, thank you for the, you know, sat there and just patting each other's back for about 10 minutes and then... What's it, what I found to be interesting was the next, it was such an intense experience in, in terms of learning the material that for the next couple of days and even now, which, which is <laughs> six weeks later, whatever it is, I find that I can go through pretty much all the script. was written by Bradford Smith, who will be in my way. That musical I was telling you about, believe me, it's nothing like this show, though. 
It's a Frank Sinatra tribute, not this. And it was directed by our artistic director, Carol Rice. And the title of this play is, Where's the Beef? Talk to you later. <laughs> But this is different. He's not from California. He grew up in Texas, and that's like a whole nother world. <laughs> yeah. Filled with red state, bourgeois pigs. Down, girl, he's not like that. He's very sweet. He's just a little different. No stress, we'll be totally casual. <sighs> Rusty, welcome. Hi, hon. Here are my buddies. We've been I'm dying to meet the guy who's been stealing away all of Sierra's time lately. Yeah. Last year it was the Obama campaign, and this year it's a war. The commune that we lived in, they allowed me to rename myself. So I went by the name Snowflake until I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then in, when I was in Southeast Asia with the Peace Corps, seeing all the ravaged lands, I reverted back to the name Cambodian. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Cam if you like. Well, activist well, of your dreams. <laughs> well, who's ready for some imitation shrimp creole and apricot pie? <laughs> <laughs> the evening. As I mentioned before, we have some special and prizes. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And I've been up now 38 hours. It was not what I expected, um, but you know when you when you rehearse that much during the day, I think some of it really just gets ingrained, and and then when you're on stage, you really can enjoy the experience more, and you don't have to worry about lines as much as I always thought you had to. So, for me, uh, it was almost like a dream come true. It was really a very um, I'm honored to have been given that role and honored to the people that I worked with, the director and writer that I worked with, and the whole experience has just been incredible, and I, I would definitely do it again. Psychotic, neurotic, uh, rite of passage for the newbies. Oh, it's awesome. I think it'd be a great thing to do is to just be out there, and you get to challenge yourself. Again, I know it's a 24-hour film race and all this, that, but with, act, with the actual play, you get an immediate response from the audience you know, to your writing. The actors are, you know, they're really, they get an immediate response, so you get to hear how everything goes right from the get-go. As long as my schedule is open, I definitely will do more. It was very fun, and I'll keep acting. Caffeinated. They should have it more often. <laughs> It was a blast. It was a great experience. You meet a lot of lot of neat people, and uh, it, it, I couldn't couldn't uh, recommend it higher. I don't think I'll direct again. <laughs> I did really enjoy it. I had a really great cast, but yeah, I'm gonna do every one day only that I can. And this is one of the only chances in the world, probably, or in your life, that you're gonna get to do this, where you could be an actor, or writer, or director, and nobody's gonna question your credentials or your or your methods. But theater can also be something that comes from you, from me, from individual people, and people don't realize it. So to get someone who has never stepped foot on a stage and have them experience 
the community that theater is, the energy, the excitement, and then have their peers, because their friends are gonna come see the show, respond. And they're responding to them differently than if than it's just a friend. It's they see their friend do something that it's creative and imaginative. There's um, a joy. You get a taste for the stage and you get a taste for um, that, that rush, that adrenaline that you have when you're performing and you hit your lines and you, you nail that number and the applause from the audience and the laughter that you hear while you're performing. The most exciting, challenging, fun, nerve-wracking thing you will ever do as an actor. It, it was real theater. It was real entertainment. It had an entertainment value that other people recognized. I, I had tremendous fun doing it, you know, everything. Energetic, exhausting, unforgettable. It was sufficiently stressful that I'm on staff now. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I want to do it again next weekend. It's just an opportunity that's, that's laid there and there's no price tag attached to it. It's a lot of work, a lot of headaches, a lot of time, but finally when that thing goes up on stage and you see all these people, some who have never stepped foot on the stage with seasoned people, the seasoned people teaching the, the, the new people how to pop properly face out to the stage or how to use their diaphragm to be able to, you know, um, project their voice to the back of the theater and see people who've, who are unsure of their talent all of a sudden go, I can do this. It's such a life-affirming um, self-confidence booster and just looking at how people react, the actors, but then also the audience appreciating the genius of the moment. It, that, you, I do it for free because I, that to me is absolutely better than any paycheck.